Hi there, this is a video on Unraid Basics, which will discuss the Unraid OS and how it uses the flash drive. We'll be looking at where Unraid stores files, and then installing Unraid onto the flash drive using a Windows, Mac and Linux systems. It'll show backing up and restoring the flash drive, and also swapping out the flash drive with the new one and updating your license key. So let's get started. Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in this video I thought I'd go over a few topics in regards to the Unraid flash drive. Now as you know we install the Unraid OS on a USB flash drive. Now over the years I've seen people online who are new to Unraid really worry about having the operating system on a USB flash drive just in case the USB drive should fail. So before we get into the topics, let's just talk about the Unraid OS and how it installs and where it actually stores its files. Well, we install Unraid directly onto the USB flash drive. And when Unraid boots, it loads the OS from that flash drive directly into the RAM. So you have the main operating system held on the USB flash drive, along with the plugins that you've installed as well. So the OS and the plugins are loaded at boot from the flash drive and then it's all held into the RAM. So the only time the flash drive will be read from is when the server is first booted or if you just reboot your server. And as for the rights to the flash drive, well the only time the USB flash drive will have rights done to it, well obviously when you first install the Unraid OS, but also if you happen to update the OS, and also when you install a plugin or update a plugin. Now don't confuse plugins with Docker containers or VMs, they're not stored on the Unraid flash drive and we'll come to where they're stored later on. Anyway, so because of this fact that there are so very, very few reads and writes done to the flash drive, and the fact that the OS is actually held in the RAM, you don't need to worry about Unraid being installed on a flash drive. Now the people who worry about this are just used to a traditional operating system such as Windows 10. This makes multiple reads and writes all of the time to the drive where the OS is installed. And a totally clean install of Windows 10, I believe is around 15 gigs, and it will grow considerably more over time. Now let's compare this to a fresh install of Unraid 6.6.1, which is only a mere 176 megs. So you get the idea, an OS such as Windows is large and it's always reading and writing data to the boot drive. Whereas Unraid is very small and kept in the RAM and rarely ever reading or writing data to its boot drive. So the flash drive certainly isn't likely to fail from wear and tear. But of course it can fail, and so that's one of the topics we'll look at in a bit. How to swap out your Unraid flash drive for a new one. But first, let's just see how we actually install Unraid onto the USB flash drive. If you're using Windows or OS X to create it, then it's best to use the Unraid flash creator. However, if you're using Linux to create it, then we're going to have to do it manually. So first, let's start with the easy way and do it with the USB flash creator. So to download that we need to head across to the unraid.net website and click download and you can download either the Mac or the Windows version and obviously here I'm downloading the Mac one. So once you've downloaded the file you just have to open it and on Mac we actually have to install it into the application folder and we do that by just dragging it across like this and then dropping it over the applications icon. And then from the applications folder we just double click it and click open we're going to have to pop in our password the first time it's run. And then here we have the Unraid Flash Creator. So now let's quickly look at the installer on a Windows machine. And once you've downloaded it and it's on the desktop, we don't actually have to install it on Windows, we can just run it straight from the file. So just double click on it and then it will open the Unraid Flash Creator. So the Unraid USB Flash Creator is identical on Windows and on OS X. So let's just go through and install Unraid onto the flash drive using the Windows version. And you can see here there's three steps. One, selecting the version of Unraid you want to install. Two, selecting your USB flash drive. And then three, writing the image. So always just double check which flash drive you're writing to, make sure it's the right one. And under version here, you can change it from the stable version if you want to to next, which is the RC versions. 
I'm going to leave mine on stable and I suggest most people do. And if we click on customize then we can do things such as setting a static IP, we can give our server a name and we'll check this box here if we wanted to boot the server with UEFI. Well, I'm not going to customize this at all, I'm just going to do a straight vanilla install. So just click on to write and then click erase and write. And now you'll see that the USB creator is actually downloading the image from online. Then it will extract the files onto the USB stick, making the stick bootable. When it's done, you'll see writing done. So then you can just close it, eject the USB stick, and then put it in your server and boot into Unraid. So using the USB flash creator is definitely the easiest way to install Unraid. But we can do it manually as well. You know, maybe for some reason the USB flash creator doesn't work for you. So let's have a look at the manual way. So if on the downloads page we scroll right down to the bottom here, we can download Unraid as a zip file. So let's download 6.6.1. So once it's downloaded, just put it on the desktop or somewhere and then unzip the file. Now once it's unzipped, let's open the folder and then select all of the contents and then copy them. And then we want to find the flash drive which you want to install Unraid onto. And then we're going to format the drive and we're going to name the drive Unraid, all in capitals, now that's important. And also, we need to make sure that it's formatted as FAT32. Then once the flash drive is formatted, let's open up the drive, and then we're going to paste all of the files into the root of the flash drive. And when that's finished, we're going to look for three files here called Make Bootable. One for Windows, one for Linux, and one for Mac OS. So as I'm running Windows here, I'm going to use the makebootable.bat. I'm going to run that as an administrator. And then you just follow the prompts and it will make the flash drive bootable. And so after that, we can just eject the flash drive and boot our server with it. So that's how we manually make an Unraid USB flash drive. And the process is exactly the same on Mac OS as well. The only difference being is we run the make bootable file for Mac instead of Windows. Right. So that brings us to creating an Unraid flash drive using Linux. Now we obviously can't use the USB flash creator because there isn't one for Linux as yet. But that is something that's in development. So as of now, when creating the flash drive on Linux, we have to use the manual method. Now the manual method is pretty much the same as what it is on Windows, but with a few differences. So with that in mind, I'm going to switch over to a Linux desktop and make the flash drive there. So this is Fedora 28, but other Linux distros will be pretty much the same. Now of course we need to download the zip version of Unraid again, and I'm just going to download this into the desktop. So once it's downloaded, let's go to where we downloaded it to and extract the files. Then once the files have been extracted, we can then actually delete the original zip file just to kind of clean things up a bit. And then open the folder and select all of the files, and then click copy. So as this is a manual install, we're going to have to format the flash drive ourselves. We need the label of Unraid in capitals, and we need to make it a FAT32 format. So once that's done, we want to go into the flash drive, and here's mine here. And then we want to paste all of the files into the root of the flash drive. Now we do have to run the make bootable Linux file here, but we don't run it from the flash drive. That's really important. So we need to close the file browser now, and then open up terminal, and then we need to open up the folder where we extracted the files to originally, and for me that was in desktop. And now I'm going to type into the terminal sudo space bash space, and then I'm going to drag the make bootable Linux file over across into the terminal, and then click enter. And then I'm going to put in my password, and here we can choose whether we want the flash drive to be UEFI bootable or not. Now you may well find that you'll get this error here. This one's saying that the command's not found. Now if you get that, just don't worry, just run the script again, and the second time it will complete fine. And you'll get a message saying the USB flash drive is bootable and can be ejected. And now it's ready to be put into the server and the server to boot from it. Right, so those are the various methods that we can use to install Unraid onto a USB flash drive. And the first time that Unraid boots, we're going to have to create our array and maybe add a cache drive. And it's at this time when the OS creates some default shares that are used by the operating system for its own purposes. Right, so we know the Unraid OS and its plugins are stored on the flash drive. 
So what about the Docker containers and virtual machines? They are not stored on the USB flash drive with the OS, but they're stored safely on the array or if you have one the cache drive. Now you'll see when you first install Unraid that some default shares are created and these are the app data share, domains, ISOs and the system share. Now the obvious one here which is used by the OS of course is the system share. And if we have a look in here we'll see two folders. The Docker folder, which has our Docker image in, which by default is 20 gigs in size, and this Docker image file is where all of our Docker container image files reside. Now the other folder you saw in the system share is the libvirt folder, and in here we can see another image file, the libvirt image file. And this is used for our VMs. It's about a gig in size and it holds important files that enable us to use VMs on Unraid, such as the XML files for each VM. But it doesn't contain the actual VM installs, the virtual disks for each VM. These are held in this share here by default, the domain share. And also in to do with VMs is this share here, the ISOs share. Here we just put in install ISOs for installing various different VMs. So that leaves us this last share here. The app data share is used by Docker containers to store data which needs to be persistent. So you'll find folders in here for each Docker container that you've installed, containing things such as the configs etc. So that's all of the shares in Unraid that are created by the system and are not user created. I wanted to talk about them really just to show what is and what isn't on the flash drive when it comes to the Unraid OS. And that's because the next topic that I'm going to talk about is backing up your Unraid flash drive. So we know that a lot of important data for the virtual machines and Docker containers are held on the array, as well as other data that we put onto our NAS. So if something happened to our flash drive, well, all of that would be safe. The flash drive failing and not having a backup, well, it would be a pain, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. But no one likes a pain, so we should back up our flash drive. Not only does the flash drive have all of our plugins on it, there's also our disk configuration, such as which disk is parity, data and cache, etc. And other things such as our network config and our syslinux config. So let's back it up now. So in this video, we're going to back up the flash drive right from the default Unraid web UI. However, there is a plugin that will do that for you, and that's community applications. You can set that to auto backup not only the flash drive, but also your app data and your libvirt image as well. So it's really useful. Now I've done another video about that before, so I'm not going to go into that now. So to back up the flash drive manually, we want to be on the main tab of the Unraid web UI. And then under boot device, click onto flash. And then it's just as simple as clicking on flash backup, and then Unraid will zip up the flash drive and download it to your computer. And then you can store the backup file somewhere safely in case you should ever need to restore the backup later. So whether you're just restoring the backup to the original flash drive or restoring the backup to a new replacement flash drive, the restore process is the same. However, if you restore the backup to a new flash drive, then you'll have to perform a few extra steps afterwards to transfer your Unraid license to the new GUID of the new flash drive. You may be thinking why you'd want to actually change your flash drive in the first place. Well, of course, the obvious reason is in case of a failure. But the other reason is just not using a good flash drive when we first installed Unraid. Now, I'm sure we've all got an old flash drive in a drawer that we've had for years and we can't even remember where it came from. And there's a good chance it may have even been through the wash two or three times as well. But in our rush to install the OS, we used that old drive but then later on regretted not having used something better. Well, luckily, we can replace our license any time we like. However, once we've replaced it the first time, if we need to replace it again, then we have to wait another 12 months. So basically, we can replace the flash drive once a year. Okay then, so let's go through the steps of replacing the flash drive. We'll take that backup that we just made and then put it onto a new flash drive and then transfer the license over across onto the new flash drive's GUID. And again, just as we did when we first installed the Unraid OS earlier in the video, we'll use the same techniques, either using the Unraid Flash Creator or doing it the manual way. And what we'll do now is use the Unraid Flash Creator. So if you don't have it, then you can download it from the Unraid website. 
and I'm going to do the restore on Windows. So I'm going to download the Windows one. And you can see here I've got my Unraid flashback up here. So I'm going to pop that on the desktop and then I'm going to run the Unraid USB creator. Now this time when I choose the version, I'm going to choose local zip version. And that's going to allow me to load my backup. And you can see here I've already got my new USB flash drive plugged into the computer. Right, so let's click to browse for the backup file and select that. And then we just click on write and it will write it back to the flash drive. We're storing the image onto the new drive. And once it's finished, we'll see the message writing done. So now we can eject the flash drive and put it into the server and boot the server. And when the server boots up with the new flash drive in, you'll notice that the array hasn't started. And you'll see in the top right hand corner, it says invalid key. And then if we scroll down here, it also says invalid missing or expired registration key. So we need to click on where it says registration key and that will bring us to this page. So now we want to click on replace key. And then in this box here, we just put the email address where we want the key to be sent to and then click replace key again. And then a new key tied to the GUID of this flash drive will be emailed across to you. So go across to your email and open up your email and you should see an email from Lime Technology and in that in the blue writing there's a URL which contains your license key. Just copy that URL and then scroll down and paste it into the box here. Then click on install key to download and install your license. Then click on to done and that's it. Your Unraid license is installed onto the new USB flash drive. And as you can see here in the top right hand corner, it now doesn't say the license is invalid. And now we can start up the array and everything will be fine. So guys, that brings us to the end of this video. Now I hope you found it useful. If you did then please as always hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'd just really like to give a really big thanks to all of my supporters and Patreons out there. It's with your support that makes these videos possible. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go. So whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you.